Okay, folks, we're back again with Billy from Fuji Guys. Hey, how's it going, Matt? I'm good. You? Good. Uh, he's been gracious enough to keep letting me pick his brain on numerous items here. And for this one, we're going to talk about this little gem. This is the new Fuji X70. And uh, Billy's got it all kitted out here. I do. I mean, it's all, you know, leather case, half case. You got the optical viewfinder add-on, which, you know, offers basically a 28 millimeter framing lines as well as a 21 millimeter framing line because of the wide converter option here that we have. So, so he's got the wide converter for the X70 here too. So that's 21 mil. So that's 21 mil equivalent. So Perfect. again, it's kind of a, a nice little kitted camera that does, you know, a lot of everything uh, that other cameras do in a, in a smaller package, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have the X100T here and uh, basically it, this, the X100 series of cameras was really, you know, the launch of Fuji's X lineup, you know, X DNA, if you want to call it that, you know, a uniqueness to it external control, styling, but also image quality, right? And the X1 X100T sorry, is the latest evolution uh, in, this, in this lineup of, of X100 series cameras. And, you know, featuring a 23 millimeter lens, which is, of course, equivalent now to a 35 because it's an APS C size sensor, X trans uh, sensor. Great hybrid viewfinder, you know, optical and electronic, just like the... Uh, the X Pro 2 kind of offered mm -hmm. uh, in that sense. But for some customers, this camera is still a little bit too big. Yeah, notice this is, even with all this accoutrements on, it's yeah. smaller. You know, so uh, we, we, we decided to make a, a little bit more compact camera where, you know, we understand, you know, cell phones, you know, nowadays uh, take great pictures, you know, with good lighting. And some of these cameras now have, you know, some of these phones now have better sensors, uh, better lenses uh, built onto it. And, you know, we appreciate that. But one of the things, of course, was, you know, low light pictures still, no matter what the marketing hype is on, on any of the cell phones, you know, still not that good. No. You no. know, and there's no true flash. You know, you can use yeah. LED flashes, but they don't really work that well. And so we decided to take out a camera that, that kind of gives you that step up. And it's not just a small step, you know, because we're going from a very small sensor now to an APS-C mm -hmm. and, you know, give the same familiarity of, you know, touch controls. And it's actually one of our first X series that has, you know, the ability to do things like touch focus, touch shooting, allowing you to preview your images by doing pinch to zoom and swipe. So all the modern touch controls are, are now on the X70. In order to keep the camera, of course, compact and small, and also, also the price down, of course, was... Uh, you know, it doesn't have the, the viewfinder option or the viewfinder as the X100T has, right? So mm -hmm. uh, in saying that, of course, on top is that little optical viewfinder if you wanted to use that uh, for framing. Um, and that's that, an optional accessory? It's an optional, optional accessory. accessory. When you pull it off, of course, so it just slides okay. right out. That's really how the camera operates. Mm -hmm. Now, the X70, of course, to make it more modernized, we knew, you know, that, you know, like a cell phone, a lot of the pictures that people take are... Uh, generally of themselves, potentially selfies. And so um, the camera offers basically a, a 180 degree tilt. Mm -hmm. So you can flip that screen completely uh, all the way up. And what it will it would set the camera to do is to switch the autofocusing system to use face detection as well as eye detection to ensure that the subject is properly exposed. Oh, okay. So when you do your nice selfies, you know, uh, the pictures look good. And of course, Having a large APS-C size sensor is very important that the camera's not picking, you know, your nose or your cheeks yes. to be in focus. That, That's true. That, you know, the right things are, are properly in focus, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the X70 has a lot of the uh, the X100 DNA. Some of the design cues are like that. Um, the lens is a little bit different. You know, this is a, a 35 millimeter equivalency. Uh, the X70 right? is a 28, 28 equivalency, and it's a slightly slower lens. Or 21 um, with that. 21 with the, uh, with the it, adapter. There's not one of these for the X100, is it? Uh, the X100 does have uh, some accessories. You oh, got, does? You okay. got the teleconverter that brings it to 50 mil, mm -hmm. and then you have a wide converter that brings it to uh, 28. Oh, so it takes so, it down to what this it, is natively. Exactly. Okay, and so then, this gives you the, the wider 21. Exactly, um, and uh, the X70 doesn't have a telephoto lens option like the X100 does, but it does offer this uh, uh, digital teleconverter feature. And basically, by using the control ring on the front and rotating it, uh, it allows you to basically crop the image to a 35 millimeter frame, which gives you sort of a 
feet of view like the X100T. Mm -hmm. And rotating it one more brings it to uh, 50 millimeters, so a little bit better for, you know, some candid portraits, right? And you could shoot video in that mode as well? And you, uh, that I'm 100% not sure. So that's one of those things um, that you can just kind of try. So that's a Put great question. real-time test. Real-time <laughs> test. I got cutters, I got... <laughs> so it doesn't like it? It doesn't like it. Let me just oh, see. Okay. Maybe it's just a setting that we don't have on right here. So we're just checking to see if yep. in that... Uh, what, what was your term for the... Um, it's a digital uh, teleconverter. Digital teleconverter yeah. mode, if we can do video. So, like I guess, it, it, it doesn't have the option doesn't to do that. that. So it's option. really just for photos, mm -hmm. and it's really just for shooting JPEG. So if you do shoot RAW, then you won't have the options to use the digital teleconverter. Now, the digital teleconverter not just only crops to a 35 and a 50 millimeter view, uh, it also then brings the file back up to its original 16 megapixel resolution. So okay. it does that by interpolation, you know, similar to what you would do on a computer. But it also then starts or... looking at edges to see uh, if there's any jaggy, starts to sharpen those edges up. So it's a little bit cleaner than if you were to just kind of quickly do it, uh, you know, on your computer. So if you want to have that spur of the moment and has a tighter field of view, then of course you could use that digital teleconverter. So feature. if I took that image and I and I did it and I increased it in Photoshop. The, what you're saying is the out of camera Fuji's magic process is going to make it a little nicer. It's a little bit nicer, yeah. yes, and you should be perfectly fine doing eight by ten prints, oh, okay. you know, and without any notice of uh, you know, image uh, degradation, right? So now the sensors in the in the X100T, the X70, the X Pro Two, like what's the difference in sensors here? They're the same actually. Black same. So X Trans Two uh, sensor and processor. So really, if you take the X100T and X70, really image quality is the same. Okay. You know, the colors are the same. You know, no low noise, high ISO capabilities are the same. Now the these are both sixteen. The fields are a little bit different. Uh, sorry, they're both sixteen megapixels. Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so right now the only Fuji that's gone to twenty four is the X Pro Two. That's correct. The X Pro Two is the only camera in our lineup that uses that new sensor and processor combination. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, the X70 is a little compact here. Um, you got the, that, that nice little case, and again, yeah. it's a half case. You have access to, of course, the battery door. Oh, that's a nice little innovation on the case. There we go. And it does actually come with a nice hand strap as well, a leather hand strap, because this okay. style camera is not something that you would sling around your neck, but more so, you know, around your wrist, right? And the, the case, though, that's a, that's an optional accessory. Another well. optional accessory. Okay, so yeah. you can really pimp out the, the X70, right? You can really right? check but it up. The camera works, obviously, out of the box without any accessories yeah. and works quite well. Well, and even really per perception-wise, it's actually a little smaller than what you're seeing here in comparison because it's, it does have that leather case on. So it's, it's a fair bit smaller than the x 100 Absolutely, T. yes. It's one of the smallest, uh, you know, APS-C compact cameras out in the marketplace. Um, with some, some of the best image quality. With some of the best image size. quality and also some of the XDNA. So things like the ability to control shutter speeds through the lens, uh, shut, uh, uh, apertures on the lens and, and shutter speeds on the top dial, things like that. Even has a hot shoe that's built in as well. Um, in addition to that, of course, you know, there's several function buttons that are fully customizable, uh, built in Wi-Fi with, you know, camera remote options. So, you know, if you're used to shooting with your cell phone, you can obviously connect wirelessly and remotely control that camera and see what you're shooting and touch focus and, and, and then send the images right to your phone. So again, if you want to quickly share that on social media sites, uh, you know, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, stuff like that, then, you know, this camera is just really great for that. And it's so compact mm -hmm. uh, in its design. Um, and, you know, if you're new to photography and you're coming from, say, a smartphone and you're used to the basic controls of a smartphone, which is basically auto white balance, <laughs> auto focus, auto everything. Basically then, no controls. Then, <laughs> you know, and then you, you, you have some flexibility to go with this because there's also a dial there to, to flip it to automatic, mm, okay. which it's, it turns it to basically a, a scene recognition auto mode that mm -hmm. detects, you know, uh, over 50 different type of scenarios. You know, you could be, you know, in a field, you know, walking or moving faster with the sun behind you. You know, I would know, well, you're backlit and, you know, you're in this green area. It's going to configure the white balance. It's going to configure the autofocus. Uh, and it's going to set the flash if it needs to, 
uh, you know, to correct for those scenes. So it's a very simple mode to do and uses things like face detection and eye detection to help distinguish, you know, the different scenes as well as movement, you mm -hmm. know. So if it starts sub detecting subjects moving faster, then it's going to prefer a faster shutter speed in order to freeze that subject and so to prevent any blur. So, you know, coming from a transition from a phone, you can use a camera as auto, but flipping that switch and now you have this great manual control where you can show depth of field through the aperture and your shutter speed controls. And being a mirrorless camera, right? Mm -hmm. When you change those settings, everything's reflective. So you know exactly what the exposure on, on that back mm -hmm. of the LC screen. So, you know, if you're new into photography and you don't understand how aperture and shutter speeds are, uh, work in correlation with you know your exposure, then a mirrorless camera is going to really make it a lot easier, right? Because easier you know get when you change the around. aperture, ooh, everything got darker. I better yeah. open up the aperture, right? Or you know, ooh, things are on focus. I want it to be blurred. Then you would obviously open up the aperture. You get that real time feedback to understand, right. you know, if you're learning to see what those changes are that you're making there. That's right. So. Um, so that's the camera there, the X70. Um, some great little features. You got full HD video, um, built in. You got some, you know, panoramic modes like you would, and you got, you know, a lot of cool things like advanced filters. So if you were saying shooting on a pumpkin field, it was all orange pumpkins, and you had your subject in it, you wanted it to be black and white, but isolate the color like orange. You can do that built in. Oh, okay. There's little cool effects like, uh, you know, um, a miniature effect. So if you're shooting very high up. You know, and you want to kind of have this kind of um, diorama effect, you know. You know, you can shoot like that and it kind of blows the top and bottom and makes everything look more miniature, right? So some really fun features uh, built into it, but also some serious features. You know? Those are features that the X100 doesn't have, is that correct? Oh, the X100 also has as well. Oh, does it? But okay. it's really just a, a, a combination of improvements that are carried over uh, to both cameras, right? Is there anything that the X70 does have that the X100 doesn't have? Um, well, the X100T really is, you know, an incredible camera, right? And so, you know, a lot of its features are carried over to the X70. Oh, okay. There are still things that the X70 actually doesn't have that the X100T has. So, oh, okay, so it's I the mean, other way, if anything. It's, it's more the yeah. other way. So if you are a customer and you really wanted, you know, an optical a viewfinder, then the X100T probably is the better point. You know, there's things like a slightly different focal length, um, built-in neutral density filter. So when you're shooting in bright sunlight, you can just quickly turn mm -hmm. that on as a three-star filter. That's a huge advantage. You know, you can allow you to shoot at uh, wide open f2. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some things that still the X1T will obviously uh, be improved on. But you know, one of the good things that I like with the X70 is that the fact that it does have this tilt LCD. So you know, it's quite useful shooting down mm -hmm. low or, or above a crowd. Uh, very easy to use, and of course, you know the the famous selfie modes also is uh, yeah you know possible and automatically flips the screen so you can kind of uh, get a a selfie picture there. I so. for myself, <laughs> I like it when a camera when you can do that because I mean a lot of times, especially if you're vlogging, like you could use this camera as a vlogging camera because you can flip it up, kind you know, and you can video. be aware of yeah. you can have that on the gorilla pod or whatever, and we can see <laughs> what's going on. Which you kind of you know it's very I guess you can do that without, but it's a big feature bonus to be able to do that. Now, the touchscreen capabilities, again, just going back to that, you know, that's another thing that the 70 has that the 100T doesn't have. And again, it's about the familiarity of coming from a smartphone to a camera like this, you know, a big sensor camera, you know, but you still have that control that you had kind of on your, on your, on your cell phone. So. Kind of making it a little easier step over. Yeah, yeah. and hopefully people do that. And, and it's one of the first step to getting more serious about photography because, you know, everyone talks about, I guess, smartphones and how, you know, the, the kind of killing the camera business. And, and in some aspects, that's true. I mean, no one's buying a point-and-shoot cameras anymore. Yeah. You know, the best camera is the camera you have with you. And you always have the phone with you. So, you know, I have nothing against, you know, having a smartphone, you know. And actually, one of the, the, the things, though, that are positive from that is that, you know, as people use and capture more photos on the smartphone, they're realizing that they're liking photography more, that they're good photographers. And then they slowly venture into, you know, a real camera. A camera that has a large sensor. <laughs> and they and, know they, uh, they realize it's almost a selling feature. <laughs> I like this. I got to get something that does it better. Exactly. Right? So it kind of pushes them into the, the, the photography field yeah. as well, right? So can't say all bad true. about, you know, smartphones out there. Yeah.
Uh, well, and I mean, obviously, I mean, these are not point and shoot cameras. I mean, you you could <laughs> technically point and shoot, but they're not point and shoot cameras. So, yes. you know, this is something you step into if you want to learn, you know, to use a better tool, right? That's this right. Is, this is a tool. And mirrorless cameras are a great way of learning that tool, you know, yeah. changing shutter speeds, apertures, seeing reflectively what's happening, you know, changing depth of field and seeing exactly what's happening. And that's going to make it an easier transition personally than, say, you know, a DSLR because mm -hmm. with a DSLR, you're changing stuff. You have no idea as a, a someone who's coming not from photography what's happening. And you see a lot of them shoot, look, shoot, look, yeah. shoot. And even professionals do the same, right? Yeah. Because there's absolutely really no way unless they're, they're using the live view on the camera, which, you know... Jimping, the famous jimping. <laughs> <laughs> so... so. Okay, well, I think, is there anything else we need to cover on the X70? Well, I mean, the 70, design-wise, it comes in two different colors, like most of our cameras do. Uh, this is the silver and, and black version, but, uh, of course, there's an all-black version, just like the X100T would offer a similar color combination as well. Um, you know, beyond that, you know, the accessories that we've shown here, this, this is really a camera, like I said, again, you want to take with you, uh, you know, at a party, and you don't want to carry a big SLR. And you might have an SLR, and you might be a professional photographer, but you know you don't want to be that photographer when you're at this party scene, mm -hmm. right? or that guy who's taking photos for everyone. You're going in, you, incognito, <laughs> small and light. You, but you want to have a good cam, and you do appreciate your good image quality and good low light capabilities. And basically, the X70 is it's really that cam. Yeah, I like how small it is, it's, and, and and the flippy screen. <laughs> Okay, well, I think we've, that's a, that's a pretty good nutshell. If you guys have any questions about the X70, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If I don't know the answer, I'll get this guy to answer <laughs> for you if I can't find him. And, and if I don't know the answer, I'll play with the camera and, and find well, the, the answer there we go. as well. There, I can't imagine you would know the answer. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank Billy for um, being gracious enough to uh, you, display some, some product for us here and discuss, in this case, the X70. And um, thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.